In this video, we will go over the mechanics, signals, and responsibilities of the R1. Signals and mechanics. These are very important for the R1. Everyone is looking at you as the R1, and it does seem very scary. But it's honestly not the most difficult position, as long as you know the rules, the signals, and look confident. So your signals tell the story and they give you credibility. They should be clear and controlled. You should own each call, be confident. You want to hold each signal long enough so everyone knows what happened. You want to separate your signals. There's a sequence to it. Whistle, point, then signal the violation. Whistle, point, signal the violation. Let's look at that one more time. Whistle, nice, loud, sharp, quick. Award the point. And then tell us why. Signal the violation. What happened? Why did the ball stop? Why did we stop the point? Don't be lazy with your signals. We want your signals to be nice and high, clear, so that everyone in the entire gym knows what you are saying. So when we talk about our mechanics and separating our signals, we don't want everything to be jumbled up. We want our mechanics to be precise. We want to use the appropriate signals. And we want to make sure our whistle is authoritative. There's a cadence to it. It's whistle, point, here's why. Everything is a separate action. A lot of people get jumpy. They get excited. They're like, ooh, I saw the ball down. And it's whistle, their arms already out pointing, and then immediately they're giving the out signal or the down signal. The thing about that is a lot of times you don't hear the whistle. The ball is still moving, still doing something. And if you don't hold your signals, people will be like, wait, which way is the point going? Whose point is it? So you have to slow everything down. This also gives you as the R1 a minute to think, a minute to use your teammates, your R2 and your line judges, your team. Use them to figure out what happened. As soon as you see a fault, as soon as something happens, you want to blow your whistle. Then pause for a second. Look at your R2. Look at your line judges they will be helping you out. Your line judges should be telling you that ball was in, that ball was out, the ball was touched, the ball went outside the antenna. They're gonna be giving you some type of signal, hopefully. Give yourself a second to look at them, figure out what happened, then you can award your point. And they're already telling you why, and you say, oh yeah, I saw the ball go out, the ball is out. So. Whistle, use your teammates, award the point, and then tell us why. This is what it looks like again. Sorry. To begin the point, you're going to be doing your beck and first serve. So your arm is out, you're checking that both teams are ready, and we're going to separate our signals just like we just did. Your arm's out, you tweet, and then you beckon for serve. All separate actions. And here's what we were talking about earlier. As soon as the ball is dead, tweet, Award the point because the ball was out. 
a lot of these signals are probably ones that you've seen before. Others, maybe not, but they'll probably make sense when you actually look at them. So the first signal is illegal alignment in proper server. If this is happening, it'll either be the R1 looking at the serving team and they, that is who they are supposed to be responsible for before the point. They are watching their, the serving team and checking to make sure they are in the proper alignment. A lot of times it's hard to figure out if you have an improper server. You usually depend on someone keeping score um, if that is happening. In VBA, we don't do that a lot. So, but if you know that that's the improper server, that is your signal. Signal number two is our line violation. That can be a center line violation under the net. In VBA, we do modify the center line violation rule. You can be on the line as long as your hand or a foot is somewhere touching the line, the center line, and you are not interfering with play, that is legal. As soon as the foot or hand or any other body part goes completely over the line onto the other side of the court, it is then illegal and you have an illegal center line violation. This same signal is used for a service fault. It's a service line violation. You use that when the ball is contacted after somebody steps on the line. So somebody who is serving cannot, they must serve the ball before they step on the line. Signal number three as an, is an illegal hit. A lot of people call this a lift. There is no lift in the rule book. This is called an illegal hit or prolonged contact. This is a judgment call. If you think that that ball came to a complete rest or was caught and thrown, you can call an illegal hit. These judgment calls can be difficult. Just make sure you are calling at the same level for both sides. Make sure you are understanding what level of play you are calling. Are you calling college level play? Are you calling five-year-old kids? Are you calling a brand new person team who's never played before? Or are you calling a pretty decent team playing another pretty decent team? Know where you are to figure out your level and what you're going to call. Delay of service, that pretty much speaks for itself. Um, <laughs> make sure they're not standing back there for 10, 15 seconds before they serve the ball. Once you beckon for serve, make sure they, are, they keep moving. You are allowed to give a warning if they are taking too long. Remember, what level are you calling at? What level are the players? The next violation over the net doesn't happen super often. This is more of an advanced um, call. You cannot block or attack a ball that's completely on the other side of the net. The blocking cannot occur completely on the other side of the net until the third contact has been made or they've directed the ball towards the other side of the court over the net. Attacking a ball on the other side of the net is never allowed. That is always going to be illegal. The caveat to this rule is you have to know where the ball is when it is contacted. If the ball is slightly still in the plane of the net, 
these things are legal. But once it's completely on the other side, that's when you can call the over the net. We'll talk about that again um, in a couple more. Number six, the net fault or net serve. The net serves an easy one. Somebody goes back to serve, they serve, it goes in the net, it doesn't make it over. As the R1, you blow your whistle, tweet, award the point to the other team because net fault. Sorry, net serve. The net fault is when a player is in the net. For VBA, we do not allow anyone to touch the net. If a part of someone's body is in the net, even outside the antennas at any time during play, that is illegal. That is one of the VBA modifications that we use. So make sure that if you see someone in the net, we are calling it. All right, number seven is the illegal attack. An illegal attack can happen a few different ways. This is another one of those advanced ones like the over the net. Illegal attack mostly happens in these two situations. The first being a back row player attacking a ball completely above the height of the net in front of the 10 foot line. So a back row player, if that ball's above the height of the net, completely above, they cannot attack that ball in front of the 10 foot line. Behind the 10 foot line, they can all day. The only caveat to that is the libero. The libero cannot attack a ball from above the height of the net anywhere on the court. If the ball is below the height of the net when it's contacted, it's legal no matter where you are. For me, personally, I can't jump high enough to be called on an illegal attack from the back row. I can try all I want to jump up that high, but I cannot attack the ball above the height of the net. So I don't have to worry about that for me. The other time that we see it a lot is from a back row setter. A back row setter is coming from the back row and they are coming up to the front row to set the second ball. That first pass to the setter does not go to the setter. It is really close to the net, it's very tight. The setter jumps up and tries to save it but they can't save it. It tips off their fingers while they are above the height of the net, while that ball is above the height of the net and it goes over or gets legally blocked by the other team. That is an illegal attack. That back row player, even by accident, attacked the ball while it was above the height of the net in front of the 10 foot line. A lot of times the setter remembers that they are a back row player and they stay down below and the ball, they allow the ball to fall slightly below the top of the net. It's, you know, not 100% above the height of the net. And then they tip it over. That is legal. They can do that. As long as that ball is not completely over the net. And again, if you're using me as an example, I can't jump that high. So if I'm going up to tip that ball, even if I'm jumping, the ball might not be completely over the height of the net. So you, they can say all day, but they jumped, they jumped. If that ball was not above the height of the net, completely 100%, they can do that. Moving on to number eight, an illegal block or screening. An illegal block can occur when you have a back row setter 
They are jumping up, trying to save a ball, keep it on their side, but they can't bring it back. It is way above them, and the blocker on the other side of the net legally blocks the ball, and it hits the setter's arm on the setter's way down. Now, if that occurred above the height of the net, that is illegal because our blocker who blocked the ball, even though she did not mean to block the ball, was a back row player. That is an example of an illegal block. Screening, screening is basically when a server is intentionally serving the ball and you have all three of their front row players lined up right next to each other with no gaps in between. This server serves directly over this um, wall of people and there's no arc to the ball at all. It just goes directly over them. The other team can say, hey, ref, can you watch for screening? That is technically illegal. It's very hard to catch. It does not happen often. Honestly, most of the time there's some screening going on. It's not on purpose. Everybody's just lining up, switching to get to their positioning, and the server just happens to be serving over that wall of people. In this sense, if somebody complains about it, warn the other team and let them know. Make sure you guys aren't screening. Signal number nine, the ball touched signal. That means a team touched the ball, a player touched the ball, and then it landed out of bounds. So this can be on a block. The players go up to block, it hits their fingers, and then lands out of bounds. This can be the serve comes over and a player passes the ball, shanks it, and it hits the wall out of bounds. This can be somebody just makes a really bad pass and it goes off onto the next court. These are all ball touched signals. Next couple ones are pretty easy too. We've got four hits. That's exactly what it sounds like. They touched the ball four times before the ball went back over. Remember, a block is not considered the first hit. The double hit. You've all heard about doubles before. This is another one of those ones that is subjective. You have to figure out and make the call. Did you see double contact? A lot of people like to call spin on the ball. Don't call spin on the ball. Make sure you are looking for that double contact. You are looking for two separate contacts. And in BBA, again, remember, what level are you calling? Have these people been playing their whole lives? Are these brand new, brand new people who have never set a ball before and they're trying their best? Do you have one team that's, you know, very, very skilled and their setter has knows exactly what they're doing and then the other team has a sub that isn't a great setter but is stepping up and taking control call to the level of play call the egregious ones you know if it's really bad and you gotta call it call it but make sure you are fair on both sides that's one of the main things about being the R1. You have to be consistent with your calls and be fair. All right, number 12 is the ball lands in. It's the end signal. That one's an easy one. We like the easy ones. All right. Number 13 is the out of bounds signal, the or the antenna violation signal, the ball went outside the antenna or hit the antenna. Number 14 is your beckon for serve. 
as we talked about at the beginning of this video. Your arm is out. You tweet and you beckon for serve. All separate signals. 15 is the substitution signal. There's not a lot of subs um, in our league, but if you ever do have a sub, that is your signal. And with that, you have the authorization to enter signal. Probably not gonna be used very often. 17, we've talked about multiple times now, your point signal. Notice how it's Notice how it's parallel to the ground. It's not really high, it's not low. Remember, all of your signals are nice, clear, crisp, up high, so that everyone can see them. Number 18 is your replay or reserve signal. If a ball from another court rolls onto your court and it's gonna affect play, tweet, replay. The timeout signal, when a team takes a timeout, you do the timeout signal, and then 19A is your timeout for your team over here. If you need an official's timeout, tweet, tweet, 19B, you need to talk to your R2. Did you just see what happened here? Has he already served? Did you see them out of rotation? Talk to your other official, talk to your teammate. If there's something that's delaying the game, if a player is doing something that they shouldn't be doing, that they keep doing, um, you can give an unnecessary delay. And number 21 and 22 are for the end of set. And if you're changing courts, if you're switching sides, so your end of set signal, tweet, tweet, or end of set, tweet, and change courts. Some key points again to remember about being the R1. Make sure you are starting the point with a loud, crisp signal whistle when you beckon for the serve. Make sure you stop the point with a loud, crisp whistle as soon as the ball is dead. Figure out what happened by utilizing your R2 and your line judges, your team. Take your time. It doesn't have to be all at once. Separate your signals. Relax. Tweet as soon as the ball is dead. Figure out what happened. Award your point. Tell us why. Make sure you are confident. Confidence is key. The more confident you look, the more confident you'll feel, the more confident the spectators will be in your ability to call. Same thing with the players. They'll believe you if you saw a touch. And remember that ball handling is your responsibility as the R1. Make sure you're calling to the level of play and be consistent on both sides. For your double contacts, don't call spin. Make sure you see two separate contacts if you're going to call it. The illegal hit or prolonged contact, was the ball caught or thrown? Did it come to a complete stop? Did it stop longer than the setter on the other team? It their set action? Is it is it longer than that? Think about these things when you have to call it. Hopefully, some of these tips and tricks and signals um, will help you. Hopefully, I was able to explain some of the things that you didn't know yet. And good luck. Be a confident R one.